And one of the things we talked about this week was the idea of preferred posture and defining that and what it means. When I get players in an evaluation, the very first thing I have them do when I go through their physical assessment, and I say, say, get in your batting stance. I want you to stride and stop and hold whatever forward lean you think you have as a hitter. Now that forward lean is happening without a ball on a tee or any sort of target. So that becomes the preferred posture of the player. So you can see right now with me, my preferred posture is in somewhat of a neutral position, which most hitters are. But we'll find that we'll have players that have a preferred posture that tends to be a little more bent over at times, and we'll have players that tend to be a little more upright. And it's those players that in a training scenario, we have a little bit more work to do as a hitting coach. And that's also where we see that we have to have players thinking that they may be doing something that their video says they're not doing in their swing, but they have a completely different thought process to get their bodies to do what we need them to do to be successful, and I'll explain that now. So if I have a preferred posture player that tends to lean over a lot at foot down, Obviously, as you watch a player turn from that posture, assuming that they hold it, and that's a whole nother ball of wax there. I get into my posture, I establish it, and I'm gonna hold that through the turn, through the finish of the swing, and I call that maintaining the purity of the arc. Well, pitches down in the zone, below the belt, are gonna be advantageous for a player with a leaned over posture. So what would you think would be difficult for a player that leans over excessively at foot down? In their preferred posture, that upright position is going to be more difficult. The ball at the top of the zone. Now at the same time, there are more players at the big league level that land in preferred posture with some sort of bend or hinge than land completely upright. That is why the four-seamer at the top of the zone is so explosive and difficult to handle for big league players today. The game has really changed from east and west to now north and south. And just like where it used to be east and west, you would find players that are always better on one side of the plate than the other. Today, all players are better on one side, north or south of the zone, than the other two. But we have to be able to handle both when we have pitchers that we say, we're establishing the, the, the four-seamer at the top of the zone. I gotta be able to handle that. So the thought process of a guy that lands in preferred posture, it's leaned over more, and that ball is gonna be at the top of the zone, a four-seamer at 96 miles an hour. Oftentimes, your players in a training situation will scoop under that ball and try to get up to it. So watch that bat path again. I land in preferred posture, I'm leaned over. Oh, that ball's at the top of the zone, I gotta get up to it. That's a very difficult path, one you'll see on Twitter by some, some other people that teach a path like that. Guys, that doesn't work. That doesn't play at 96 miles an hour at the top of the zone. That ball's gonna be swung and missed through, it's gonna be fouled straight back, or it's gonna be hit straight up. And we see this when we get to spring training, we start putting the machine on at a very high velocity, and guys that scoop up to that ball with that type of path are filleting balls over the dugout time and time again. So what has to happen is they have to turn and align to that ball in the correct posture at foot down. That becomes part of the pitch recognition process. So the pitch recognition, I go, oh, that ball's at the top of the zone, bam, I gotta land in a little bit more upright posture to be able to turn and align to that immediately without scooping up to it. Players that have this type of posture at foot down have to think they are often getting on top of that ball. That's what you hear them say. I heard Anthony Rizzo speak about this recently in his own approach. When he first came up with San Diego in the big leagues, you know, everybody thinks about him as a Cub, but he first came up with the Padres, and guys were just blowing 92 mile an hour fastballs by him because he had a little bit of length in the swing. Now, for a different reason for Anthony, but he had to think on fastballs, I have to get completely on top of those balls, that my swing path is coming completely down. But if you ask any kid that watches baseball, you'll say, how does Anthony Rizzo swing? You'll say, he has some sort of lift in his swing because he hits a lot of fly balls and hits a lot of home runs, and you'd be accurate. So the video doesn't match up to his thought process. That doesn't make Anthony Rizzo wrong. In fact, it probably makes him really smart because he's compensating to make his body and trick it into doing something that it probably does not want to do that allows him to have success. So you can't take a big league player's thoughts literally and put them in a training situation. 
And I think that's really good and re really important to and say it again. You can't take a big league player's unique swing thoughts literally and take them into a training situation. Because what works for that player and the unique thoughts that gets him to do what he needs to do is not applicable to everybody across the board. So we have to figure out what do I need to do to be successful in this. So I have a couple other players, big league guys as well, that tend to land in a little more upright posture. So the four seamer at the top of the zone, they're gold on that. But now what type of pitcher do you think they would struggle on? It's the sinker slider guy. And what they want to do on the sinker slider guy, that ball at the bottom of the zone, I like to land upright, so I go, oh, that ball's down. And that's how they want to get to it. They want to disconnect their hands. And they always tell me that ball feels like it's a million miles away. Well, it is from their eyes because they're upright, the ball is down, and instead of going, oh, that ball is down, let's land, turn, in a line to that, and attack from underneath the ball, they go, oh, man, that seems like it's a really far away, and they want to swing to it like that. And of course, the bat's in and out of the zone that way, in a very indirect path, a steep path that ends up coming and cutting out of the zone, too. So my thought process to them, said on a sinker slider guy, your goal today is to hit four of the highest fly balls to the center fielder you possibly can for outs. Now, what do you think those guys do? Say, okay, okay, coach, I'm buying in. I'm going to hit four of the highest fly balls I can to the center fielder. They turn, align, attack from underneath the ball, and end up driving the ball over the center fielder's head. A unique thought for them. So it's their preferred posture that lands upright. It doesn't like to get down to that pitch low, so I've got to trick them into getting to it. The other way they will first do that, guys that like to land upright, is they'll get to the low pitch by doing this. They'll bend their knees straight down to it. They take the, I say that, taking the elevator down. Because by taking the elevator down, what do I do in my posture? I keep my preferred posture. So I've got to get them out of taking the elevator down, hinging at the hip, trying to create a better torso lean and attack from underneath that ball. So that's why we go into a training situation. I love that drill we did with the PVC that was, uh, I think, step 11 or 12 of our 10-step PVC progression, where with the PVC, the coach or another player would tell them either up, mid, or low in the middle of their stride. And force you have to turn and align correctly with the posture to that ball. That is a great way to start off getting out of preferred posture, getting uncomfortable, and getting used to turning and aligning to balls that are far north and far south in the zone.